Okay guys, here we go. I'm gonna do a one prop Z test with some calculations so you can see my when I when I do hypothesis tests, I like to do them in three steps only. I don't like to think too much. So after I check the conditions, okay, the conditions are so I'm gonna do that that's separate. I'm gonna hone in on the logic of what hypothesis testing is so I can get it down. These are the three steps. Null and alternative. Make a null model, and after I make a null model, then I'm going to think quickly, then make my calculations. I'll calculate my test statistic and my p-value. I'm going to walk you through that right now. I'm hoping that you can see the logic in a minute. So here's the problem I have. In 2000, 30% of people liked butter. Okay, well, now we know there's this whole thing now that more people, butter's not as bad as it once thought, right? Has it increased? Meaning, how do more people like butter now? I go out and sample 50 people randomly, let me throw it in there, randomly, and I find that some amount like butter. Now, I'm not going to tell you how many I found in my sample yet, and I'm going to show you why, because I don't need to know that yet, because that's going to give me my P hat. So I can calculate a P hat, whatever this is over 50, is going to give me the percent of my sample. I don't need that for steps one and two, okay? So here we go. Ho-ha. Well, if 30% used to like butter, I'm going to assume 30% still do. And that's my null hypothesis. My null hypothesis is that the proportion in the population, the truth, is still 0.3. My alternative is going to answer the question, has it increased? Well, let's see. Let's see if we can prove that it has increased, because that's what I'm curious about. 0.3. Now, I'll put 0.30 if that's the way you like to see it better, OK? Now, remember, there's a P and there's also a Q. If 0.3 does like butter, then what percent don't like butter? 70%. So this P is 0.3. Don't forget my Q equals 0.7, right? So step one, ho, ha. I got my ho. I got my ha. I got them both. So what do I do now? Step two, draw the null model. What's the null model? It's a normal model, okay? It's a normal distribution or a T model or a chi-squared model. This one happens to be Z, so, okay, normal model, centered at the null. So if 30% of people did, now I'm assuming 30% of people do like butter still, and I go out and take a sample, I'm probably going to get a P hat somewhere near 0.3, okay? If 30%, I'd be unlikely to get like a P hat where like 80%, that might make me start thinking that more people like uh, butter now. But I should get something around 0.3. And my null model is exactly centered there. If the null were true, I expect about 30%. So that's where all my p hats. This is a sampling distribution. If I, I'm imagining taking a tons and tons of samples of size 50. Here's 50. Oh, 30 people in this group like, okay, that's a p hat of 0.6. Oh, 20 people, that's a p hat of 0.4. I'm getting a whole bunch, imagining a bunch of p hats, and I know what that looks like. How do I know what that looks like? Because we know sampling distributions for proportion look like this. The mean of all the P hats, it's right on, if you take AP stats, it's right on the formula sheet. It says the mean of all the P hats is the true P. And the standard deviation of all the P hats is root P, Q over N. So I know that this model is centered at P. And I also know the standard deviation of this model is the square root of P, Q over N, which in this case is, 0.3 times 0.7 over 50 and the square root of that whole thing. So I type into my calculator 0.3 times 0.7 divided by 50 square root point parenthesis 0.3 times 0.7 divided by 50 is point, a point, about 6.5%. So I know that I know that this model is centered here, and you expect it to be centered there. And I know that if I take a bunch of p hats, it's 68% of the time it's going to be between 0.365. Hold on, let's go up 0.365.
my point two three five. Oops, I'm going down six and a half point two three five. And if I go down six and a half again, I get about seventeen percent. So what do I know right now? I know that 68% of my sample should be between 23 and 36%, okay? I know that nine, 60, 95 of my P hat should be between. It will be very unlikely for me to get a P hat lower than 0.17 or above 0.43, meaning it will be unlikely for me to take a sample of size 50 and have over 43% like butter or under 17% like butter if the true population if still 30% like butter so this tells me that this is what it's saying it's saying here's where my sample statistics are going to probably be if I took a ton of samples 68% of my samples they'd be between 23% and 36% butter likers if the null were true 95% of my sample should have between 17 and 43% butter likers if the null were true. So that tells you, you know, if I go and take a P hat and I find out, oh, 36% like butter, that's not overwhelming evidence that it's increased. That could have just happened randomly. That could be a P hat that would just happen randomly. In fact, getting something here or greater happens randomly about 16% of the time. So it's not, we know that 16% is beyond this. We want something that's unlikely to happen randomly, something that's unlikely to happen randomly out here. Well, what was my sample? How do I even move on? Well, I know right now I have an idea what would be weird. And in the bottom corner behind me, I actually wrote the number of people in my sample that liked butter. Here it is. Actually, 22 in my sample liked butter. But I didn't need that until the last step, okay? I'm, I thought, now I'm going to calculate my P hat, my sample statistic. My P hat was 22 out of 50. 22 out of 50 is 0 0.44. 44% of my sample like butter. Now let's see, what does that mean? Let me take a look. Where would 44% be on the null model? Let's see, where's 44% on, oh my God, here's, 44% is out here. That's my P hat is way out there. This is where most of the P hats are. 68% of the P hats are here. How likely is that to happen randomly? So that's this, this step right here. This step is, is, is what you're seeing is getting your P values. How unlikely would that happen? What's the likelihood of that happening randomly if the null were true? Well, if the null were true, this would happen randomly. Let's see. First, let's find a z-score. Now we're going through the normal model again. Let's find my z-score. Well, my z-score is 0.44 minus the mean all over the standard deviation, 0.065. Let's do that calculation. 0.44 minus 0.3 divided by 0.065 is 2 0.15 standard deviations away from the mean. That thing right there, that's called a test statistic. Why is it a statistic? Because it's the thing that came from your sample. That is statistic. Here's my test statistic. Two standard deviations away from the mean. Oh my God. Now, we're going to answer the question. How likely would that happen randomly if the null were true? Well, you know it's low. What's the next step? Well, we either use a, either use a table, a Z table, and say, okay, I got a Z score of 2.15. You go to 2.1, 0.05, you're like, oh my God, 0.011, well, very low. Or use norm CDF. You could just put it into norm CDF. You say, what's the likelihood of going from there all the way out to infinity in that direction from 2.15? out to infinity, if you can put it in, or 999, okay? This is like the hot dog contests and things like that. It's just a normal model problem, follow the flow chart, and you find out that that p-value is very low. It's around less than 1%. It's 0.01, that's a low p-value. So it's about 1%. 
So this is what it's saying. If the null were true, if 30% of people did like butter, getting this random sample, 22 out of 50, getting that randomly if the null were true would only happen 0.01. That's my p-value. Would only happen randomly about 1% of the time. I'll say that's pretty low. As a matter of fact, with a p-value that low, I'll reject the null. There's strong evidence that more people like butter now. Why am I saying that? That's my conclusion. With the p-value, I'm rejecting the null. I'm going with this. This is what I'm saying. There's more people like butter now. Why am I saying that again? Here's why. Here's why. Because if 30% of people did like butter, the likelihood of me getting this p-hat randomly, if that was true, is so unlikely to happen randomly. This is what I'm saying. Getting that sample is so unlikely to have happened randomly that I don't think it was random. I think more people like butter now. I don't think only 30% because if 30% did, this weird freaky thing would just have to happen randomly. Well, I don't think it did. So what the p-value says, that's the likelihood of getting that sample statistic, okay? If the null were true, it's the likelihood of getting this p-hat from your sample, from this pile of p-hats, this null model. So basically, the p-value is the likelihood of getting your p-hat from that pile of p-hats, and that pile of p-hats comes directly from your null hypothesis. You know the center of your null, hypoth your null model and the standard deviation of your null model. So how likely did your p-hat come from that pile of p-hats? That's the p-value. I hope that made a little bit of sense. Good luck. This is tough stuff. Stick with it.